AI market is expected to triple over the next five years. Employers are saying that AI and big data skills are going to be the most important skill set by 2030. But to be honest, I don't think I need to do much convincing here. We've all seen how AI has changed the world over the past few years. And I'm sure you've all been surprised by the speed of change and felt the same concerns about whether your job is safe. So how can you ensure a sustainable career during these rapidly evolving times? There are two ways I'm thinking about this. First, leaning into the tools to become an AI power user. This allows you to get way more done. But another way, especially as a programmer, is to become competent in AI engineering, so understanding, building, fine-tuning and deploying AI models yourself. I was actually reminded of the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie where near the beginning of the film the robot takes the dad's job on the factory line but then later at the end of the movie the dad gets a new job fixing the robot that replaced him. The parallel is that if AI is going to be taking over some existing tasks then a smart place to position oneself is knowing how to build the AI itself. So without further dressing up let's explore what an AI learning roadmap could look like. I ended up using ChatGPT deep research mode to do an analysis. So it took the top 50 most popular AI and machine learning frameworks and libraries in 2025 and compared them using these four metrics. First, GitHub stars. This is a measure of developer interest and community engagement, basically how many people are using and contributing to the library. Then we have academic publications. So this is the number of papers published in the last year, so between May 2024 and May 2025. And this is a good indicator of what researchers are using and citing. So specifically, this was via Google Scholar using a keyword search for the 50 libraries. Next, we have Stack Overflow questions. This shows how many people are asking questions about these frameworks. So it tells you how active the community is and how many people are struggling with the tool. And then finally, job listings. So specifically, this was active job postings on Indeed in the US only as of May 20th when this analysis was done. So this is a great indicator of which tools employees are hiring for right now. So if you want to pause and take a look over these figures, I'll give you a moment now. But what I did was essentially I normalized all of these values so this is just the data in a table format, but I normalized all these values. So each column scaled between zero and one and then calculate this normalized score using this equation here, which essentially applies the same weight to each of these metrics. But the idea was to get a balanced view of what's popular, what's in demand and what's actively being developed or discussed. Here are the consolidated results. So let's discuss what each of these tools are, how they fit into the AI landscape, and then I'll give you a summary of what else I've found during my research. And finally, we'll go through a roadmap of exactly what I would learn if I wanted to learn AI from scratch in 2025. And it'll also be what I'll be covering on this channel in the future, but we'll get onto that in a minute. So this table shows a breakdown of the 10 tools and what they're used for. And I want to draw your attention to the distinction between classical machine learning and deep learning. So I'll overlay on the screen how these tools are split into three broad categories, classical machine learning, deep learning, and then more specialized tools. So for classical machine learning, these models rely on structured data and mathematical techniques like regression, clustering, and decision trees. Machine learning models excel at making predictions based on historical patterns and are widely used in industries like finance, healthcare, and marketing. Deep learning takes inspiration from the human brain using neural networks to process vast amounts of unstructured data like images, text and audio. These models are great for complex tasks like image recognition and natural language processing. And then we also have the specialized libraries. So these streamline AI tasks often working alongside machine learning or deep learning frameworks. Now, if we move over here, I want to show you what the top AI companies are using. So as you'll see here, we've got companies like OpenAI, Google, Anthropic, Meta, etc. And what you'll notice is they all use these deep learning frameworks Works. So you'll see the same three, PyTorch, TensorFlow and Hugging Face coming up frequently between all of them. Just to recap, PyTorch and TensorFlow are both deep learning frameworks that allow you to train, fine tune and build neural network models from scratch. Whereas Hugging Face, on the other hand, acts as a repository for pre-trained models, especially for natural language processing and computer vision. So this makes it easy to use existing AI models rather than building from scratch. Now let's move on to the suggested learning roadmap. And at the end, I'll suggest some learning materials that I've personally used or been recommended. But here's a key point before we get started. Python reigns supreme for machine learning. It's unmatched in library support, community and integration. So this is widely accepted. In fact, all of these tools that ranked in our top 10 of our analysis are either Python libraries themselves or are designed to integrate seamlessly with Python. So unsurprisingly, that's where our learning journey begins. I've got here two prerequisites, Python and basic statistics. I'd recommend having these bases covered before or diving into machine learning. Specifically, what you should learn is well, master the basics of Python and also focus on understanding these three libraries. So pandas for data manipulation and working with data frames, numpy for numerical computing and working with arrays, and also matplotlib 
for visualizing results. And then under basic statistics, you want to cover things like descriptive statistics, probability, inferential statistics, and data types and relationships. And quick pitch, I have a new Python for bioinformatics course that will teach you all of the Python knowledge you need, as well as how to use AI assisted development tools. Link will be in the description for that if you're interested. Now, after Python, the next step I've laid out is classical machine learning. So this is using the scikit-learn library in Python. So here are the reasons why we're starting with classical machine learning and not just diving straight into the trendy neural network stuff straight away. This is a recommended strategy by most experts in the field. Why? First, it builds a solid core of machine learning concepts upon which we can build later. And scikit-learn is the most widely used classical machine learning package globally, a no-brainer. So what will you learn here? The goal is to understand machine learning basics, handle and pre-process data, build and evaluate models using core algorithms and interpret results or using scikit-learn's consistent interface. And if you're crafting your own syllabus, here's a more specific breakdown of what you might want to cover. So machine learning basics, data handling, data pre-processing, model building and core algorithms, either supervised and unsupervised models, model selection and evaluation, and then finally interpretation and deployment. Now, a keynote from me is don't get stuck in tutorial hell. Reading theory and watching videos endlessly can feel productive, but you want to get hands on as soon as possible. Building projects alongside the theory is, in my experience, the best way to learn. It creates space for tinkering, questioning and experiencing the trial and error cycle in real time. Plus, you'll develop a tangible portfolio to showcase your skills to potential employers or to guide future projects. All right, moving on from classical machine learning, we can now jump into the more popular and sought after field of deep learning. Our previous analysis at the start highlighted two primary deep learning frameworks dominating the space. We have PyTorch and TensorFlow, and additionally, Keras, which is a high-level API built on top of TensorFlow and simplifies the process of defining and training neural networks for a more user-friendly interface. Now, whether you choose PyTorch or TensorFlow is up to you. Maybe you'll even want to learn both. However, I suggest starting with one. From my research, what I found is that TensorFlow is best for production-grade deep learning, so it's widely used for scalable, industry-ready models, whereas PyTorch is ideal for research, rapid prototyping, and experimentation, and it's more Pythonic and intuitive. Pythonic just means it follows Python syntax. And from what I've read, PyTorch has been gaining traction even in production environments, becoming more of a favorite among developers. Given its flexibility and strong presence in research, I'd personally recommend starting with PyTorch, especially if you're coming from a scientific or academic background. But the choice ultimately depends on your goals. Regardless of which framework you choose, the learning journey in deep learning generally follows this structure. So you'll start with an introduction to deep learning basics, covering neural networks, forward and back propagation, and loss functions and optimizers. Then you'll learn the essentials of your chosen deep learning framework, whether it's PyTorch or TensorFlow, followed by building and evaluating models and exploring different deep learning architectures. Next, you'd focus on training and tuning, refining performance through experimentation and debugging. Then you'd move into more advanced topics like transfer learning, where pre-trained models come in handy. This is where tools like Hugging Face, which is that repository of existing models, comes in handy. And finally, you'd want to cover deployment and production. So learning how to run models in real world environments and integrate them with other systems. And once you've wrapped up this section, again, avoiding tutorial hell and actually building projects, you're ready to branch out into more specialized fields. I won't outline a strict roadmap here, but some key areas that you might want to explore are shown here. So firstly, using and understanding models. So you can now dive into hugging face models to see what pre-trained models you can use and modify. Another critical aspect is model explainability. So deep learning is often seen as this black box and tools designed for explainability help uncover how and why models make decisions. This is especially important in high stakes fields like health care and finance where understanding AI driven outcomes is crucial. Another area is MLOps and AIOps. This focuses on deploying, monitoring and managing AI systems in real world settings. As AI adoption grows, these skills are becoming highly valuable. Another area is privacy and security in AI. So you could explore methods like federated learning and differential privacy, which allow models to be trained while protecting user data, crucial consideration in today's AI landscape. And then finally, there's the fun, rapidly evolving side of AI, generating lots of excitement. This includes AI agents, so autonomous systems that interact with their environment, multimodality, so models that combine text, images, and other types of data. You've also got AI memory, so these are techniques that allow models to retain information over time. And then you've got more advanced areas in computer vision, natural language processing, reinforcement enforcement learning and large language models. So that's the roadmap you can follow. Now let's talk about resources you can use to start learning today and how I personally would approach this. So first let's talk about books. Books are great, but there may be more efficient ways to learn quickly, at least for me, which I'll get to in a moment. But quick rewind to 2020 during the first lockdown of the pandemic, I picked up this book, Hands-on Machine Learning with Scikit-Learn, Keras and TensorFlow. 
So I just finished my undergraduate degree and I was stuck at home all summer before starting my master's degree and I made it my goal to spend at least an hour each day going through this book and I have to say it was excellent. It breaks down the theory, provides code snippets and includes example problems to work through. Honestly I can't fault it. There's actually a newer version released in 2022. I have the second edition which was released in 2019 but if you're considering buying this then I'd get the third edition. I've had a look at the syllabus and it's essentially exactly the same with a few minor updates and actually if you do some digging online you'll be able to find the full PDF version of this book for free if you don't feel the need for a physical copy. Maybe I shouldn't be saying that in a video but probably save some money. Now this book doesn't cover PyTorch which is actually what I'd recommend to learn over Keras and TensorFlow. So I did some research admittedly using Perplexity AI and I explained my background and what I was looking for and it essentially recommended well two books one was this one again which we've already talked about but the second one was this one Machine Learning with PyTorch and Scikit-Learn. So this second book it also teaches you classical machine learning with Scikit-Learn but then it teaches you deep learning with PyTorch instead of TensorFlow and Keras. Now I can't personally vouch for this book as I've not actually gone through it myself but the reviews look good so maybe worth looking into but of course do your own research before buying any of these. I'm just relaying what I found. Now here's the thing, I don't really consider myself a book person anymore. Maybe it's the era of instant information access, but for me going through an 800 page textbook feels inefficient. I prefer watching videos and using AI tools to learn faster. I mean if I can find a one hour YouTube video that covers a topic thoroughly and I can watch it at 1.5 times speed while I'm eating my lunch, it's so much more efficient than reading a textbook. It might just be my attention span that's been fried over time, but it's just my personal preference. This isn't to say you should do the same, it's just what works for me. So I'm actually going to be making a whole series over the coming months diving into AI, essentially following this exact roadmap that we've laid out today. So we'll start with classical machine learning with scikit-learn and then we'll delve into deep learning most likely with PyTorch and eventually into more advanced topics like AI agents and other trendy topics that are all the hype right now. I'm not setting a strict video schedule for this, it will be more ad hoc at first and I'll likely still make videos and other stuff too but if AI is something that you're interested in learning and you want to follow along then hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you can stay updated when new videos are released. All right that's about it for this one but before I go let me just say this, things are moving fast. AI is advancing at a ridiculous pace and from everything I'm seeing AI skills along with being adaptable, resilient and open to change are going to be essential for staying relevant. The stuff that's come out recently even in just the past couple of weeks especially with regards to AI agents has only reinforced this to me. But it's not just about keeping up it's also about creating and opening new opportunities for yourself. Learning to build with AI isn't just a survival skill it's actually pretty cool. Anyway that's a wrap on this video I'll see you in the next one.